Hey, it's Joseph here. Enscape just released version 2.8 and this release again includes a lot of great features that is well worth noting. So I'm very glad Enscape decided to sponsor this video for me to tell you all about it. In the last release of version 2.7, they actually included a mode called BIM mode, which allows you to see the selected elements property inside of Enscape. And this has been extra useful for Revit users as it can show some of the parameters that's not immediately available for you. So especially when you are looking for specific materials, those things are often hard to find inside of Revit or takes a long time as it has to load all the materials. Whereas here you can immediately click on it and then find the material types that are being used. And this always has been useful for me as I can quickly understand what sort of materials that the render is showing. So I definitely have been putting this feature to a good use. Fortunately, Enscape did not stop there trying to fill the Revit's feature gap. They now have introduced a mode called collaboration mode, which I'm very excited for. Keep in mind that this feature works for SketchUp, ArchiCAD, and Rhino as well, but I'm gonna use Revit as an example to showcase it to you. Because Revit allows you to have a central model where multiple people are syncing into a one single file, it is quite typical for people to have a task list alongside the model so that they can keep track of the progress and provide feedback to each other. However, this becomes somewhat complicated as Revit natively doesn't provide such feature. So we have to rely on third-party add-ins to task and comment tracking. But now Enscape builds that feature right into itself. Just press C on Enscape window and you'll see a new tab showing up or you can just right click and then press create issue. So you probably have noticed each of the tasks is actually called issue. And if you actually open the tab by pressing C, you can click on this button here to create issue and it's going to render the image and then show you a snapshot here and you can designate the title, description, and the state of the issue. And this issue will actually save to the file, so anyone who has the access to the same file will be able to view and address those issues as well. Okay, so from here, I can go closer to this corner of the house where it looks at the table, and then C for collaboration mode, and then I can click on create issue, and here I am going to designate a name of table and then description would be to move left and then I can also change its position I can go a little bit closer and then update the scene by pressing this button here and then it's going to re-render that specific image but at the same time I can also change the issue position and then just put the marker here and then save and once that is saved you'll see that the marker has appeared here and then I can go back to Revit now and then select this table set and then use move to move to the left and once that is moved on the Enscape side you'll see that this has moved to the left. And now that marker is still here, so I can click on this one and notice the difference in two. And then I can just change that to done and then save, and then the marker will go away. So there's no listing here that is shown. However, if I click on show all, and then I'll be able to see all the previous markers that are available. So all of these markers were done in prior, and you can see that they just kind of float in space and I can click on them to view that specific angle. And then I can also click on the listing as well to see that specific issue. So this way you can quickly jump between the scenes that you have made the issue. And before it gets either done or removed, you can also leave comments on that specific issue. So I can say something like, so I can just leave a comment and someone else could actually look at that as well. 
Fortunately, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Do you remember that I had mentioned the third party add-ins to keep track of the tasks? And actually one of them is called BIMTRACK and they work together with Enscape to integrate their feature inside of Enscape as well with this collaboration mode. So all I need to do is press C again and there's the Enscape logo here. Actually, you can change this by clicking and then change that to BIMTRACK and then I can log in and then that will actually take me to the browser side where I can sign in. So BIMTRACK is actually called BIMTRACK.CO. I'll leave a link in the description for you guys to visit their website as well. But here I can actually log in with my account as well. And then I can just click on this hub here so I can create my first project. Project name, this would be a test. And then I can create that. And once that is live, I can go back to Enscape itself and I can see the test project showing up here. So I can just click on that and save. So now that is live on this list here. So I can create an issue and this is a BIM track. And then you can see there's a lot more parameters that you can set. So the description is just for the test and then you can have certain type common issue so I guess this would be a request and priority is critical and discipline this is actually something like technology or architecture as well and then I can go to different zone if you have some zone set so let's say this is exterior and then I can go to the phase and then I can say something like CD assigned to myself and then I can set some due dates as well and then certain type of group. I'm not gonna set any group at this point and notify Joseph Kim as well and then save. And once I do the save, that issue will be created here. And also if I go to the projects here and then go to the dashboard and I can see my BIM track first list and you can see in the browser what sort of issue that was and then I can leave certain type of comment. So you see how you can view all of this via browser instead of relying on Enscape. So even if you don't have access to the model or Enscape itself, you can still address those issues or at least comment and view on those issues as well. So obviously if you had been using BIMTRACK already, it's no brainer. It would be a great integration together with Enscape using a render engine to show you the snapshot of what it's supposed to be. But even if you are not using BIMTRACK just to keep track of the task and the issues that you have and leave comments and such, it would definitely be useful to utilize the collaboration mode. If you have a keen eye, you probably have noticed that already, but whenever you're looking at the vegetation, you'll see that trees are actually moving. And if I zoom in closer, you'll see that the grass has a little bit of ripple effect as well. And the amount is greater if I change the settings. So if I go to the visual settings and inside of atmosphere, I can change the wind intensity and direction as well. So I can make it look like a stormy day and you'll see that trees are moving a lot more intensely almost like a stormy day, right? And it is actually the same on SketchUp as well. So if I go to the render scene inside of the SketchUp, you'll see that the trees are moving and the grass has a little bit of ripple effect. And as I let go of the keyboard and mouse, and you'll see that everything kind of freezes in that moment. And as I move again, it will have that movement back. And actually, Enscape had the water rippling for quite some time now. And if I actually go back to the visual settings of SketchUp here, and then change the intensity of the wind down to zero, then you'll see that everything sort of freezes and everything come to a halt. And if I want to control that separately, I can go to the materials, check on the override wind settings on the water, and I can have that different intensity. This one, I can just leave it as this. And if I go to that specific scene, you'll notice that all the trees are not moving. The grass is not moving either, but uh, water is rippling. So you can control that completely separate. Now speaking of not moving on the wind, if you actually have some sort of rug in the scene, the carpet or rug, 
let's say I have this carpet that's laying on here. I'll just make it into a red carpet. And previously you would have designated the keyword grass in order to make it into a fur-like material. So if I go to landscape here, it is gonna show up as basically red grass or red carpet. However, if I enable the wind again, let's make it a bit more dramatic. And here that you'll see that the carpet is moving and it really shouldn't. Maybe if it is really long and it is outdoors like this, but you probably don't want your carpet to ripple like that. So instead of using the keyword grass, you can use the keyword carpet. And it's gotta be either the long carpet or the short carpet. I can do long carpet and then I can go back here and you'll see that it is static now whilst the grass is moving. So you can either do that or again, go to material and then change that to carpet from default. So from default, we're no fur at all. And I can change that to carpet and change the carpet settings and control how tall you want the carpet to be. But if I want really long ones, I can increase the height and you'll see that it is a really long carpet. So along with the animated vegetation, that's how you would designate carpet. And because of animated vegetation, things will look a bit more lively and natural whenever you're doing video renders or live presentations. And the next thing that I wanna mention is 400 new assets into the asset library. So if I click on the asset library, you'll see that some of new assets are available with a tab that shows which is new, or you can actually click on this new category here and you can see that it is 401 new assets available. And if you visit Enscape's webpage, it lists that healthcare assets has been added. So whenever you're working on the healthcare projects, you'll be able to have all of these assets available for you. And all of these features are listed on their webpage as well. So I'll leave a link in the description as this is not the end of the feature list that has been included in the version 2.8. And also be sure to check out their webpage to get the 14 day trial to try all of these new features if you haven't already. If you have enjoyed this content, please like this video and subscribe to my channel to continue watching these type of videos. Thank you so much for watching as always. I'll see you next time. Bye.